So this is it. These are the last two Gundam kits of 2021. That is crazy. We've done the rest. Well, besides the SD kits, but we've done the rest. So today, let's go with the easy one. So yeah, the Entry Grade Strike Gundam. I'm super excited about this, mainly because this right here, the Entry Grade Oryx 78 2 was such a good kit. If you haven't seen the video of that, I did that very recently, and you can check that out. And I also completely adore the high grade strike right here. It's such an awesome kit, so I'm excited to see what the combination between both of these are and what we get with this. So what we've got right here is the bag version of this. I'm not sure if there is a full box version of this yet. I expect we're going to get a full weapon pack soon as well, just like we did with the Oryx 78 2. But as for what we get in here, it seems like this is a similar build to what we did before. Extremely simple and well laid out by the looks of things. You do not need any tools. It's nicely separated in the areas that matter. And we've got some articulation. And the only weapons we have in here is the Armor Schneiders. Let's get this checked out. And as usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these, all of your own, there's a link down there in the description. So yeah, I'm most definitely not building this in the bag like I did with the real grade Oryx 78 2. So I'm just going to do this the easy way. And I'm not even going to use any tools. I'm going to do what they say you can do in here. And that is just... Snap it out with your fingers. So this is one of those kits that is super easy to put together. As you can see, everything's laid out very smartly on the runners, and they really need to make some army builder kits out of this. Some grunts, a Zaku, something like that. This is perfect for that. Come on, Bandai. So we do have three runners in here, and just like we would have seen before, you can actually snap these apart at these little segments here, these little narrow, narrow spots in order to actually separate these into the parts. But I find it easier to build using the runners stuck together like this. So I'm going to keep them all attached. So like I mentioned with this build, you do not even need a nipper. You can actually snap the bits off the runners just like so. Now, of course, a nipper is recommended, but it is not required. So this right here is the point in this build when I realized just because you can does not mean that you should. And just plain old yanking these off the runners is actually leaving some very visible little knob. You can see them there on the side of that part. And if you keep on going at this rate, you'll end up with those all over your kit. And that definitely will not be the greatest look ever. So you're just going to lose more time having to clean these up with something like a file or something like that. So from here on out, I'm going to be using a nipper. When it comes to the build, it's extremely simple yet satisfying. There are no poly caps, it's all plastic parts and they all layer up very intelligently for something that doesn't have that many parts involved. Honestly, these entry-grade kits so far are impressing me a lot. So these kits right here have borrowed a lot from the Fine Build System or the 30-Minute Missions kits. So we've got a lot of these C-type joints that just click in like so, and then a extra part that pops on over it like this to lock it into place. Super simple, super satisfying, and you get a very nice kit extremely, extremely quickly. Once again, just like with the last entry grade we saw, we've got amazing color separation and sandwiching in the head, so much so that we do not need any stickers. Once again, impressive for something that is essentially a budget kit. So all through this review, this kit was seeming just as impressive as the entry grade Oryx 78 2. But during this final assembly right here and just feeling it a little bit afterwards, I was starting to notice that that might not seem to be the case and the entry grade strike might not be to the level of the Oryx 78 2. But anyway, let's check it out. So now taking a look at the overview of absolutely everything that comes in the box and this is definitely, well, a very simplistic kit. We've got the entry grade strike itself and a pair of armor schneiders. That is it. So that's going to be one quick accessories. Anyway, before that, we're going to be checking this out. So on to the aesthetics. So anyway, first off, there's the full 360 spin of the entry grade strike and on the whole, definitely impressive. The colors look great. The overall silhouette and proportions look perfect, and this thing has one evil seed-style glare to its face. Everything looking where it should be, and honestly, on the whole, very impressive. Now, I will mention I have modified this slightly, so that does mean I took these safety nubs off the head, and I've done a little bit of panel lining. But besides that, this is exactly what it looks like just out of the box. And again, it looks great. But yeah, there isn't really much else to say. Let's zoom in on a little bit closer and talk about the good and bad. So for the aesthetics in this review, I'm going to be comparing it to the two benchmarks we have. That is 2014's High Grade Strike. And then we've got the Entry Grade Gundam, which I think came out last year. So there 
are both of the 144th scale strikes we're going to be taking a look at today. So first off, before I say a single word, down there in the comments, which is which? Which is high grade? Which is entry grade? Pause the video, comment, and let me know. Okay, great. The reason I'm saying that is, is because these are so, so similar. Oh, the answer, by the way, is the entry grades on the left, high grade is on the right. But yeah, these kits are super similar. So when it came to the entry grade Oryx 782, I found it was a complete and utter winner, for me anyway, against the high grade. This isn't so clear here. So, one great thing is, the color separation on the eyes is pretty phenomenal for the most part, compared to the fact that we do need stickers here on the strike. Except sometimes the stickers are quite nice because they do reflect the light. Also, if you get in real close to the high-grade strike here, you can see that the Vulcans, or whatever they're called in seed on the side of the head, are not color separated. But if you take the entry grade, yes, they are, and that looks very, very premium. However, one thing that is killing me about this kit is the no head camera. There is the sticker right there on the high grade, it's in red. There's nothing on the entry grade, it's just blank. Same round back, so it's great when kits don't come with stickers when they don't need them, but... The entry grade here kind of does. Getting on around to the back of the head and the entry grade wins again because we've got color separated gray there. This is just panel lined. That is color separated. So head wise, between the two, the entry grade is the clear winner. Except I find when you look from directly below, I feel it makes the eyes look like they're bulging a little bit. This is obviously meant to be viewed from a more threatening angle like this and that's when it works best. Now when it comes to the entry grade Oryx 78 you can view those eyes from every single angle and they look beautiful. Also, that typical seam that tends to make its way down the side of a Gundam's head isn't really there except from the head camera mohawk segment on the entry grade. Besides that, it's not there. We do, however, have that on the strike right here, which is a little bit of a letdown, but if that is the price we pay for all that color separation, totally worth it. Torso-wise, the entry grade wins for me as well because it's pretty much visually identical, but we have more articulation, which I'll talk about later, but beware of the nubs. I feel when it comes to the arms and the shoulders on these kits, they're about even except the entry grade has a nicer, see that little segment there? That is nice and solid. When we actually take the high grade, we've got a little bit of a gap in the plastic. When it comes to the waist unit, I feel it's pretty much identical on both. That is visually, by the way, there's a lot of articulation differences we'll talk about later. When it comes to the elbows, you've got hollow part or funny round joint. Make your choice. The legs for the most part are visually identical as well, besides one little feature. Inside the knees on the high grade right here, round back, it's the usual flat back of knee. Usual. The entry grade right here has this little bit of an indent, probably to facilitate both of the C joints in there, but yeah, that kind of looks cool. Finally then, the feet are very similar as well besides round back the heels on the entry grade are open whereas on the high grade right here they're closed so yeah when it comes to the looks on both of these kits they're about the same aesthetically they're very 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 similar in most aspects the only thing i feel that the entry grade wins out over the high grade is the fact that the head is super mega hyper part separated it is a shame about that head camera though but otherwise this one's around six or seven dollars this one here is about 10 or 11. for things that look pretty much the same you're definitely winning out a little bit visually i will stress a lot visually with this kit right here, the entry grade. However, I have to say, if the entry grade Oryx 78 can have that little bit there color separated, that tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, the entry grade doesn't have that much of an excuse for that head camera. Anyway, as I said, on to the next part. So yeah, when it comes to the entry grade strike, all we get in here is a pair of armor schneiders, and I guess that's all the standard strike started with in Gundam Seed. So this is in the entry grade Ale Striker, Sword Striker, any of that, so I guess that does make sense, and I will talk a little bit about compatibility as well. So the Armor Schneiders here, they're quite simple. You just take them, stick them in the hole in the hand, just like so, and there you go. Strike Gundam is ready for some stabbing. Anyway, there is that entry grade Strike Gundam up on the shelf for that bit of a shelf presence test with its full loadout. Now, it kind of goes without saying that a 144th scale kit with no wings, no nothing, just a little pair of knives will get lost in most collections. But I don't really think that is the point of the entry grade. It's not there to blow you away with its absolutely monolithic shelf presence, but it does do its visuals justice, and I guess, what else can you ask for? So the entry grade strike right here is similar to the high grade in a lot more ways than just its looks. So if we flip this round to the back, the hole right there, as far as I know, is exactly the same as the one back here, as well as the other hard point. So 
let's try some accessories. So first off, trying out the high grade strikes rifle. Does it fit into the hands? Yes, it does. Stick that back on and there we go. Rifle totally fits. Next up, bringing in the shield. Can that fit into the hard point on the back? Yes, it can. So interesting. And finally then the ale striker pack. That should fit too. So popping that on to give us an entry grade ale strikers so yeah all the high grades equipment does fit onto this kit so anyway there is the entry grade strike with all of the high grades accessories up on a stand with that full 360 spin now if you don't have the high grade in order to give these accessories to the entry grade, is it worth it? Honestly, I say you'd be fine with just the high grade itself. Now, potentially there might be a weapon pack in future for the entry grade, so rushing out to get the high grade just for the accessories would leave, well, the high grade without its accessories. But anyway, let's try some other stuff. So if the Ale Striker pack right there fits, then so should the one that came with the Wyndham. So let's pop it on and see. Yeah, there we go. The Striker pack from the Wyndham fits perfectly and he's falling, falling, falling off that action base. Oh. And lastly then, how about some parts compatibility? Now, you will not be able to swap anything. Well, maybe you can swap the head of the high grade. Let's see. Popping off that head. Taking the high grade one. Does it fit? Mm. No. How about the entry grade onto the high grade? Yes, it does. So if you do want to steal that superior entry grade head, then you can. That, I assume this one does, but but I don't really feel like forcing anything at the moment. Hey, psh, come on. Force it. Try. Force, force, force. Yeah, it does fit. It does fit. If you wanted to, for some reason, put the high grade head on the entry grade, then you most certainly can. You'd also be able to swap the hands, but when it comes to up on the arms and shoulders here, we've got these kind of ball joints. Now, I assume these are exactly the same we would have seen on the entry grade Orc 78 right here, except the angle at which they can move up on the Orc 78 too. We don't have that here, sadly. I don't know why they decided against that, but anyway, sticking on the arm. Of the RX-78-2 fits, but the shoulder armor does not. It can kind of sit on there if you wanted to, but it is too loose. So there is some compatibility so far among the entry grades. Yeah, the hip there looks the same too. So finally now moving on to the build and the articulation. And when it comes to the build strength of this kit, it is quite good besides one part that's been giving me so many woes since the beginning of the video. And that is this. Raise the arm up and it just pops right off. Raise it up and there it's gone. No effort involved in doing that. Now, if I reach on back for the entry grade RX-78-2 here, that wasn't a problem. This thing is solid as a rock. Nothing causes the arms to pop off. So this is due to the shoulder armor here clashing with the shoulder peg before raising it up. So if you want to stop this from happening, you need to bring down the shoulder armor first before raising the arm, then that won't be happening. But we don't get as much from this as we do with the entry grade RX-78-2 because we don't have that cool joint up in the shoulder. What were they thinking? So anyway, at the neck, we've got that full decent giggity 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 goo. There's the head looking all the way up. Good. Head looking all the way down. Very good. Side to side gets all you'd want. And we've got that pivot side to side as well. Not sure what band I was thinking with the shoulder here. It's a C-clip. There's what the other side looks like. There's it forward and back. So it's quite weak. I don't know why they thought this would be better than the old school cup and ball. Full 360 spin. Again, there's the arm all the way up. Full spin at the upper arm. Ball joint wrist. There is what we get for an ab crunch, so not too bad. However, it's the side to side band. Oh, bye bye arm again. It's the side to side that Bandai definitely put a lot of work into. Not bad. Also, full spin all the way around. Front skirting armor moves up like so. It's not a ball joint, so it's just up and down. Side skirt is on a ball joint, so there we go. We've got up and down, as well as swinging back and to the front. Round back, it's a paralyzed butt flap, doesn't do anything. Inside the hip right here, it is a ball joint, and I have heard of people saying the entry grades ball joints tend to break in the hips on them. Not sure if this is the case with this kit or not, but nothing has ever broken for me just yet. So there is our kick all the way up to the front. There it is out to the back, a little blocked. And as for the splits, again, just like the last time we would have seen, not too bad for ball joints. When it comes to the spin at the upper leg, it's back to front like so. It doesn't go all the way around. There is our bend at the knee. So it's a two-point bend and not so bad at all. Getting the foot on the ground to test out that functional movement. And there it is all the way to the front. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! That is crazy. Next up, there it is all the way out to the back again. Very, very nice. And there is the side to side. So not too bad at all. 
How about a little bit of an impromptu face-off, or pose-off even? So testing the poses now, we've got the entry grade on the left, and we've got the high grade on the right. So the one thing that the high grade can do that I prefer is actually move its shoulders backwards at an angle like this for a more dynamic stand. This, its shoulders are kind of locked, stuck at this point. It's next to not noticeable, but... I notice it. So starting off the pose off, and there they are just standing there side by side. There's the arms raised all the way up, the high grade and the right winning. There's the side ab crunch on both, and yes, I said on both, the high grade cannot do what the entry grade can do. Ab crunch to the front, ab crunch to the back, kick to the front, kick to the back, splits, splits with the feet still flat on the ground, and finally then a bit of a lunge as well as that elbow bend. So for the most part, it seems like the entry grade does have the high grade beaten. There is aspects that are of course better in the high grade, but all round, in general, it tends to be a little better and more dynamic on the entry grade. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I was debating whether I should make this silver tier or not. The thought process behind that is, this to me feels like this is what's going to be the baseline for entry grades to come. However, I feel like that's doing it a disservice when you compare it to something like high grade. This, in a lot of ways, is vastly superior to high grade, especially when it comes to the separation in the head and other parts of the body as well. So therefore, I'm going to take this into consideration as 144th scale high grade-esque when given it its tier. So this, to me, is a gold tier kit, and extremely, extremely good. The good completely outweighs the bad with this one. So when it comes to the aesthetics, it's absolutely beautiful with fantastic color separation, especially in the head. And honestly, there's nothing bad to say aesthetically. Accessories wise, this is a simple kit, but that is in line with entry grade. So we've got two armor Schneiders, but we do have the option to use other parts from other high grade seed kits, which is a massive plus. Lastly, when it comes to the articulation, this is fantastic. Sure, the shoulders might pop off if you don't have them lined up correctly. So move that shoulder armor. It would have been nice to actually have the same joint we had on the... RX-78 too, so we could raise the arms a little bit more, but besides that, this can pose up a storm and is solid as a rock for now. Some people have mentioned that the entry grades do loosen up over time. I haven't had that happen yet, just keep that in mind. But yeah, gold tier, fantastic, I adore this line, and it's a great place to start for beginners. Is it better than the high grade? Well, I would say I do prefer as of right now, the base unit, but the high grade comes with the Ale Striker, a rifle, beam sabers, and a shield, and for what, four dollars or so more, that's quite the steal. Anyway, if you do want one of these of your own, link in the description. As always, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time.